Ciao friends! Today I was about to look at one of my old articles and I wanted to record a video about the article. The thing is, as soon as I started looking at the code shown in the article, I quickly, I quickly recognized that the code was suboptimal. Actually, it was really awful. So I decided that it was time to rewrite the article with better code. But then I thought that there is actually a value in showing how I start from an old article and what is the process of writing better code that runs faster and is more readable. So I just turned on the camera and instead of doing all the work, I'm sharing with you the entire process of taking a bad code and turning it into better code. Let's do it together. The starting point is the article. Now, the article is an old article that shows how to apply an end logic to slicers. What do I mean by that? Well, when you have a slicer, like in this case, the numbers produced by Power, P, Power BI are using an OR condition. So if I select cell phones or computers, the number of customers and the sales amount that you see there are the number of customers that bought either cell phones or computers. And these are the sales that bought either cell phones or computers. The goal of the article is to create a different calculation. These customers with all categories. Customers with all categories, that shows that number 28, is showing the number of customers that both bought cell phones and the computer. From here, the title, using an end logic with values in a slicer instead of the default or logic. And uh, the code is shown here. Customers with all categories. Let me see if I can zoom in a bit, a bit less. Okay. The code. Uh, uses uh, a simple technique. It first counts uh, the number of all the categories which have been selected, and then it checks for each customer the number of cat categories that that customer bought. And if the two numbers match, that means we have that customer counts. So it uh, iterates over the customer key. It computes the number of categories that this customer bought using calculate controls values of product category filtered by the sales table. Now, this is using uh, an expanded table, and uh, expanded tables are cool, but they are kind of slow. So these are columns uh, is probably going to kill performance. And then the outer filter filters uh, add columns uh, to retrieve only the customers where the number of categories is equal to controls values of product category. Because this value is executed outside of any other filter, because there are no calculate before it, this is the number of categories uh, selected in the slicer. The measure works, but uh, I would bet that uh, it's going to be extremely slow. So we need to, first of all, validate that it's slow and then find a better way of authoring the same code. First step, I copy the code. And uh, this is uh, a quite an old article. It still used the Power Pivot. So I don't have uh, this model. We need to start from an empty model. This is the standard model that we use for all the demos. It's just Contoso. And starting from here, I just copy the measure and I start looking at it. So I create a new measure, copy the code. And it does not work because in the old version, we still had a, a normalized version that contained a snowflake for category and subcategory. We no longer have the product category table. Now everything is denormalized. <coughs> In the product table. But it's enough to make these two small changes. And now the measure works. Let me add it to the report. And you see, it's uh, definitely slow. Look at the time it takes to compute a report only slicing by month and year. The numbers are probably correct, meaning that uh, we have 650 customers that both uh, either computers or TV and video, but only nine of them both bought computers and television and video. So despite working, the measure is definitely bad. And uh, we need to understand how it works and then start to modify it until it reaches a better performance. 
I also need to validate that the new measure I write uh, will be identical to the previous one. So I need to copy the code. I cannot just modify this. Otherwise, I will not be able to check that the numbers are correct. And instead, I build a new measure. I call it just customer2. And we start looking at the most evident problems. Right now, there is no need to do anything uh, more complex than look at bad practices and remove them. The first one is here. This count rows is inside the filter over the customers. So this is likely to be computed a lot of times. And there's no point in computing it inside filter. I can store it in a variable. And we call it the number of selected categories. And I didn't copy it. We put it here. And then we use the variable instead. So we remove the first problem. And while we are in this process, we can also get rid of other pieces of code. These add columns can be stored in a variable. So let me add it and create a new variable customers with the num of categories. Okay, <clears throat> uh, not really. I need to use the new variable here. And while we are here, let's do the things the right way. We also create a variable result where we store our count rows. Return result. Now, I didn't change much, but at least it's more readable. I do not expect this customer number two to be faster or better than the previous one. But before doing anything else, we check that we didn't do any damage. So I add the measure. I need to wait until the measure gets computed. But I only want to check that the numbers are actually the same before doing anything. Waiting? Uh, no. OK. Numbers look identical, both at the total and on the individual rows. So now we can start playing with it. The problem is uh, not in this count rows and in this filter. The problem uh, looks like here. Because uh, for each customer key, we need to compute the number of product category. Now, product category is not in the product table. And we, have, we are taking values of customer key and we are taking uh, values of product category. Now, where is the problem here? That the customer is here. Let's get rid of promotion. And the product is here. We have sales in the middle. So I'm counting customers from this table. And uh, for each customer, I need the number of uh, categories which happens to be in the product table. And here is my problem. I cannot just scan the sales table. I need to iterate over a customer, use sales as a bridge in order to reach a product. But actually, I can do that in a different way because, uh, well, first of all, instead of iterating over sales, cast over values of customer, customer key, I can iterate over sales, customer key. So we get rid of uh, customer because there is no point in uh, scanning customers that have no sales. Nevertheless, uh, even though I iterate over sales customer key, this is not going to improve performance because my biggest problem is this calculate. This calculate computes at the values of the product category using the sales as a bridge. So it's computing a column from product using sales as a bridge. What I can do is uh, uh, a different thing. I can uh, scan the sales and group it by customer key and the category. Category is in the product table, but I can use summarize to do the grouping by. I'm lost. Let's go here. So instead of doing this, I can do create a new variable customers and the categories that uses summarize 
to summarize sales and I want to summarize by customer key. Yes. Uh, sales customer key and <clears throat> product brand no product category and i can do that because uh, uh, because there is a relationship so i can group a sales by product category the thing is that this table the result of summarize contains the customer key and the product category and I cannot use a distinct count here. That would be lovely, but I can't because product category is on the product table. But once I have this table, the customer and categories, I can group it by customer key and count the number of categories. There is a DAX function that does it. It's not commonly used, but it's actually extremely useful when you need it. You can actually replace this all this with a new calculation that does a group by we group we use uh, customer and categories to do the grouping by we group by that's going to be longer so we group by what by sales a customer key and then group by let me uh, iterate over the custom the current group so i can create a new var a new column categories while we are in the process of optimizing, let's also use the add symbol. And I can do a sum x over the current group of one. Group by does not let me do counting. So I need to sum one over the current group in order to do the counting. And that should be all because now group by retrieves. Uh, Customers and categories grouped by customer key with a new column categories that contains the count, the count of uh, categories. Now, group by has a bad habit of uh, being executed in formula engine, so I'm totally not sure that this is going to be faster, but we will check it later. The result is still filter customer with number of categories, the same variable where categories is that number. Okay. Customer 2, it's already here and it's working. In order to check performance, we can do a more complex job, but for now, we can just get rid of this and see what happens. If, for example, I filter one year, you see, it's, uh, it already looks much faster than before. If I change the categories and I add more, it looks like it's working definitely much, much faster. Can I do anything better than that? I actually could, but I'm not sure. Let me see. Well, before doing anything, this measure looks much better. Let's take a look with DAX Studio. So we do have the query. It's already here, customer and customer two. Let me add the other measure. Wait until it computes something. Get rid of the filter by the year. Then I will take this query. Mm. I can also get rid of sales amount and number of customers. I don't need them to do performance analysis. I only want customer and customer, customer with all categories and customer two. And then through the performance analyzer, I steal the query. Refresh the visual. Let's see how long it takes to refresh the matrix. Waiting is the hardest part of optimizing code. Okay, I now copy the query because I want to see how good I have been. And I launch Tech Studio to monitor performance. I could uh, clean up the query, but I'm actually not interested in doing it. I only want to take the query plan. No, I'm not interested in the query plan. I only want to see the server timings. Okay. And then we first execute the customer with all categories alone. So I remove a customer two and I run the query with the original code. So we have a baseline, the time that was needed for the previous query, 
to for the previous measure to run, and also the separation between storage engine and formula engine. Oh, look how bad that is. I was expecting to be bad, but honestly, not that bad. We have something like 5,000 storage engine queries. Uh, most of them are in the cache, but still, uh, look at those numbers. They are just crazy. Anyway, I promised the video with no editing, uh, or maybe I didn't promise, but that was the goal. So no editing at all. Let's see what happens. I might choose to cut some of these uh, before the end because I don't want you to stay here looking at uh, these numbers, but it's totally crazy. Okay, 16,000 storage engine queries uh, to run this code uh, that executed in only 4.2 seconds. So, the, no, sorry, the execution time is 7 seconds, <clears throat> 4 seconds of Formula Engine and 3.3 seconds of Storage Engine. But look at this number, 16,000 storage engine queries. I don't want to lose this part, so I let me copy everything. I create a new window where I put the other query with my customer too. Now I get rid of the other one. I enable the server timings. Here we are. Let's run server two. Whoa. Well, kind of good. Now it runs in 25 milliseconds. There is still a lot of formula engine, but not that bad. It's way better than it was earlier. There are several queries. None of them is really complex. And it's much faster. So we moved from 7.6 seconds and worse, 16,000 storage engine queries to only six storage engine queries and 25 milliseconds of total execution time which uh, is pretty good, means that we did a good job. It was already noticeable without having to look at uh, Duck Studio, but uh, it's good to have confirmation that our customer to measure works way better. Now, we could do better than that, to be honest, because uh, we could uh, get rid of uh, this calculation that happens cell by cell, do the calculation inside all selected in order to further optimize it, but to be honest, I don't think it's worth doing anything more than that. It's already extremely fast and good enough. So what will be the next step? Well, the next step is to start doing teamwork. Because I work a lot with Marco, what I will do now is take this measure, send it to Marco, say, hey, this is what I did, take a look at it, give me some feedback, and later we will update the, update the article and provide you a better version of the same code. Enjoy, Dax.